I most vividly remember The Wizard of Oz, and that's been my favorite movie for most of my life, and I was obsessed with it, and I watched it over and over and over again. I wanted to be Dorothy for many years of my life, until I was about six. I would wear my hair in the pigtails, and I think my grandmother made the costume, the little gingham checked um, jumper, and I had ruby slippers, and I made my mom call me Dorothy. I wouldn't answer her or listen to her if she called me Megan, because that wasn't my name, for about a year, from five to six. I always told my mother that I wanted to be an actress since before I can remember. And I think, you know, maybe it started with Judy Garland and, and Wizard of Oz, but I've just never had any um, desire to do anything else, and I'm not really sure why. I was a swimmer when I was a kid. I was on a swim team from the time, a competitive team, from the time I was five until I was 14. And I used to compete in state championships, and I thought that's what I was going to be. I have a pretty strong butterfly, still. Yeah, I'm much slower than I used to be, which is very sad, but it's still decent. My form is there, the speed is gone. The first legitimate thing I booked was a, uh, a straight-to-DVD film with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen called Holiday in the Sun. I think my character's name is Brianna, if I remember, and she was a mean girl. She was the spoiled, rich, um, nasty, sort of alpha female that picked on the nice, sweet, blonde Olsen twins. I don't know if people try to typecast me as that. I think I just sort of, for whatever reason, fell in in to being playing a mean girl, and I think more so because there are many more blonde actresses and there are brunette actresses, and so the chances of the heroine being blonde are statistically greater, and so then you want a visual opposite to portray the evil girl, um, and I am that that opposite, I guess. Growing up when I was little, I liked X-Men because my, my older sister collected X-Men comics, and then when I got to be about 11 and 12, I discovered one called Gen 13, it's basically an offshoot from X-Men, and it's uh, these three girls and a guy who's sort of like in and out of the team, and they're, they're superheroes, and there's a little spunky one called Roxy, and I just sort of liked, I, I named my bird after Roxy, actually. I was a cheerleader for a, a, less than a year for like one basketball season um, when I was in high school. I think more so because it got me out of the house. Um, I was always grounded, and engaging in an extracurricular activity was deemed okay by my parents, and so then I could actually leave my room <laughs> to go do something, get some fresh air, be outside. And I think that's really probably the main reason I did it. But I was not good at it. It was terrible. I'm also just not built for it. I'm too, I don't know, gangly or waif-like or something. You have to be really strong. Um, I think women are harder on everything than men are. But I think grown women in particular can be, for some reason, really um, hateful towards me. But teenage girls seem to be, they accept me much more. When I get tattoos, I don't necessarily think them out. I don't put a lot of, a lot of thought into them the way some people do. They're sort of more impulsive purchases. I got that after I did, I completed the first Transformers, I got the Marilyn Monroe tattoo. And I, I don't know, I've always l liked her and like I said, been intrigued by her because she created a character that she lived behind. So she was always playing a character within a character in all of her movies, which I think is, the psychology behind that is very interesting. I didn't want to be literal, I didn't want to put someone on my arm that I was I wanted to emulate like Ava or someone or Liz or whoever. Yeah, it could have been Liz. Maybe I'll get I'll get them around. I'll get like a a flower of famous faces on my arm. When I got the call that I'd been offered this spot to host SNL, I, you know, I didn't really want to do it because I'm so terrified and and just I I become frozen when I have to speak in front of large crowds of people. But obviously you don't say no to something like that because it's an unbelievable opportunity. So I did it, and I went, I'll never watch my episode ever. I can't. That gives me a panic attack thinking about it right now. Maybe, like, after I've had children and there are just so much, and there are more important things in life 
then I'll be able to sit back and watch and go, ah, who cares? I would say I'm a cat person, even though most cat people are so strange. People that admit to being cat people are always so bizarre. Like, whenever I go to work out, my pants are always covered in cat hair. It's so embarrassing. Like, I'm that person. I'm that lady that goes out with cat hair all over her pants.